Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Josephine Ko here and I'm a Bosendorfer concert pianist as well as a theorist. Recently, I've started this channel to present advanced theory lessons and diploma lessons. In my two previous videos, I presented an introduction to J.S. Bach's Well Tempered Clavier as well as the Prelude and Fugue No. 1 in C major. Today, I'm going to present the second Prelude and Fugue in C minor. So, this second Prelude, like the first Prelude, is based on a motif. This motif is likewise repeated twice in every bar, all the way up to 24 bars. It is certainly more animated and energetic than the motif of the first prelude. It has a driving motoric rhythm due to the persistent reiteration and mutation of this motif. Likewise, derived from chords with alternating notes within, Bach systematically shape the work of two-part counterpoint and give this prelude its distinctive virtuosic character. To be played at a relatively fast pace, it reveals Bach's prowess as a virtuosic harpsichordist during his time. There are certain distinctive features in this prelude. Firstly, we see a number of sequences which we can use terrace dynamics. Let's look at bar 5 and 6, which is sequenced in bar 7, 8, and 9 and 10 in different keys. So from C minor, it approaches G minor. And then F minor, dominant of E flat major, and then it modulates to E flat major. At bar 14 and 15, the notes became very closely written together and that requires a certain nimbleness in the touch. And of course, he builds up the climax, starting from this point with a diminished 7 chord. at a dominant chord with an arpeggio. The form is interesting, the main consideration. As the motif rapidly develops with varied harmonies and changes of keys, the main consideration in performance would be to avoid being sounding blatantly repetitive or just to show off technical work. The distinctive sequences would call for variation in the dynamics. From bar 25, the music gives rise to this monody, building on the dominant pedal point. And before we know it, we arrived at bar 28. And this is indicated presto. It soon arrives at another tempo marking, which is adagio. So what we can see here is bar changing the nature of the prelude. It becomes impository at this point. When we arrive at the Allegro, it is actually the corda of the prelude upon the tonic pedal.
ending on the tears de Picardy. It would be interesting to add just a little mordant on the last note. So let us go through the prelude again. Let us now look at the fugue. The fugue in C minor has three voices. It begins the subject with the alto voice. We will notice that it has a very simple motif that uses the alternation of notes. So it has the auxiliary note within and then it's built on the chord of C minor. And the next one is another repetition of the motif, but slightly different. And the next one is also on C, but... with the subdominant chord and then to tonic. The soprano voice is a tonal answer. It is a fifth higher, Well, the alto voice is the counter subject. So, in the next two bars, we enter into a codetta, whereby the soprano voice and the alto voice moves into part counterpoint. At bar seven, the bass voice enters with the subject in the tonic. Thus, we have a clear exposition from bar 1 to bar 8. Next, we have the middle section of the fugue. It has an interesting figure of a descending scale. And this builds into a sequence. Bar 10 is a sequence of bar 9. What we have here is a short episode before the subject enters at bar 11. Yes, and into the key of E flat major. So with episodes occurring and changes of keys, we soon arrived with the subject entering in a tonic key again at bar 20, which signifies the beginning of the final section. With the use of contrapuntal techniques of counterpoint amongst the three voices, we have the subject, the counter subject, and the descending scalic figure, as well as a fragment of the subject appearing in such a way like this at bar 25. It is interesting that Bach arrives at the end 
off the fugue with a corda at bar 29 upon the tonic pedal. So, let us hear the fugue now. If you like what I do for you today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below and I would like to hear your comments. In any case, you can look forward to the next video which is Prelude and Fugue number 5 in D major. See you soon!